welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name's Sandra, and I'd love you to settle into your space because we're gonna work on a mantra, um, but there's a caveat there. It's not a mantra that we've done before and um, does kind of have a lot of words. So all I'm gonna do is just ask you to repeat them after me and then let it go. I'll chant it. I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you thinking, oh my gosh, I have to remember this. The reason I don't want you getting into that mindset is because this is a mantra that invites in patience. Yes, patience. It's called um, the Guru Gayatri Mantra. And so hopefully, I don't know, it, the, the tune has kind of a very calming effect, I feel, and so I hope you feel that as well. But first, having said all that, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in through the nose, Big exhale. Let's do that again. Deep inhale. Loud exhale. And one more. This time, hold the inhale. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. Okay, let it go. And then take the arms all the way up above you. Bring the palms together and release them home to your heart in prayer pose so that you can set a very fabulous intention for your practice. When you're ready, release the hands. Keep your eyes closed. There's nothing to see. You're just echoing back what you hear. Before we put these words out into the universe, why don't you pause to think about where you need a little bit more patience in your life, right? I am getting a little impatient with being locked down, but I'm more impatient with the people who think it's you know, not necessary. And so, the internal struggle I've been having today is, is in need of a mantra such as this. So where do you need the mantra directed to your life? And I think that's what you should have in the forefront of your mind. So repeating what you hear, go binde, makunde, Udare, Apare, Hariang, Kariang, Nirname, Akame. See, aren't you so glad I told you first? You didn't have to memorize this to chant it back. Oh, take a deep inhale and then a really loud sigh of relief. And then keeping your eyes closed, just let the words float around you and move about creating a vibration of patience. Gobinde makunde udare apare Haryan karyan nirname akame Gobinde de makunde udare apare haryan karyan nirname akame breathing in patience releasing that which is not And then take one more deep breath in and let it go. 
Let's settle that right hand on the earth beside us. Inhale that left arm up, side bend to the right. So the dictionary definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate a difficulty or an annoyance without getting angry or upset. Come on back up. As you release the left hand, take the right arm up. Exhale to the left. And so that last part of the definition is pretty darn important, right? Without getting angry or upset. Because that's such a waste of our energy. And it's very tiring, right? But I want you to also think about this. Having patience also requires energy. I'm going to let that one sink in for a second. Come on back up. Bring the right arm down. Take the hands behind you into yoga mudra. So the palms come together like this. Interlace the fingers. Draw the shoulders in. Slide the shoulder blades down. Arms are straight so the knuckles are aiming down at the earth behind you. They're probably touching the floor. Feel how the collarbone lifts. Close your eyes. I kind of think to have patience means waiting. We're waiting for something, right? We're waiting for things to change. Uh, we're waiting for things, I guess, to be safe. But in waiting, waiting is not inactive. Waiting does not mean you aren't doing anything. Waiting requires positive energy, and sometimes that is a lot. Option A is to stay right here. Option B is to come forward into a fold, and you can either keep the arms stretching out behind you towards whatever wall is behind you, or you can bring the arms up above you if you like. And then if you're in that fold, slowly come back up. Ah, try to keep the back long, release the arms, shake them out. Perfect, let's take that right arm across the heart, stretch it out. Try to soften that right shoulder down. Slightly deepening the breath. And then switch arms. So I guess one of the reasons I say that finding patience requires energy is because sometimes it seems easier just to get frustrated and to explode, which is also um, a release of energy too, right? And so think about on those days or those occasions when you feel like that, what it actually requires from you to make a switch. Yeah, a lot of positive energy exerted. And so waiting is not sitting and doing nothing. Inaction requires a lot of action. Release the arm. Inhale the arms up. Take the hands to the heart and close your eyes. Stay right here. Is nothing occurring just because we're sitting still? I would suggest, and those of you who have a restorative practice normally totally get, there's a lot going on when you're sitting still. Let's breathe in some of that patience and peace and let it go. Release the hands when you're ready. I have a really fabulous restorative pose to start out with. We might not want to move for the hour, I'm just saying. If you have a blanket, go ahead and grab it. So I've kind of already pre-folded mine. I'll unfold it a little bit. Um, I want this to be long and narrow. So looks like that. I'm putting that behind me. 
Give you a second to get that there. If you don't have a blanket, don't worry about it. It's not a requirement for this pose. Laying flat on your back is gonna be perfectly fine. And then, if you have a block and a bolster, I want the bolster um, going horizontally across your mat. My block is gonna prop up my bolster just in front of it, so it's tipped at an angle towards me. And so, my knees are gonna end up right here on top of the bolster, and then I wanna be laying back on this blanket. So as you scooch closer to get your legs over, reach back, slide that blanket in so you can feel it touching your sacrum, and then gently lay the spine back along that blanket. If you have an extra little tail above you, you can roll it back under so that your head is elevated. And then close your eyes. Ah, this one is good. I am happy here. <laughs> I think here I can find all the patience in the world. Ah, so just let yourself settle into your space. I want you to feel that the legs can completely let go. They're supported by the block and the bolster. You don't have to hang on. If you don't have those props, and you can, if you can grab something else just to put underneath your knees, that would be fabulous, even if it's just your sweatshirt, right? The last thing in the world I would ever want to happen is for somebody to be stressed out in a restorative class that they don't have the right props. You don't need the props. We can always find a way to work around it. So let's just really slowly lift both arms straight up towards the ceiling. That's the inhale. So very slow, right? Exhale, take the arms all the way overhead towards the floor unless you have shoulder issues and the shoulders do not want to go there. So I'm not gonna actually let my arms touch. I'm a little elevated anyway, so I'd have to drop them way behind me to get them to the floor. So they're hovering. And then I'm gonna bend the elbows, pulling the arms into scarecrow. My arms are just still hovering over the floor on each side. And then as you straighten the arms, just send them back down alongside you. So I'm not touching anything. My arms are kind of doing a snow angel thing, hovering over the earth. Really slow movement. Inhale the arms to the ceiling. Exhale them overhead. Remember they're hovering. Inhale, slide them gently into scarecrow. Exhale, the arms straighten and swing down alongside the body. You got it. Inhale to the ceiling. Exhale, the arms reach overhead. Inhale, scarecrow. Exhale, arms will straighten and reach down alongside you. Now, do that, let's say three more times on your own because I really want this to feel meditational. I'm just starting my last one, my third one. When you're done, you'll just let the arms release to the ground. Ah, 
let the arms feel so heavy when they touch down that they feel like they can't move. It's just you and your breath. And the patience that we've invited in through our mantra. If you liked the sound of that one, you can find um, a couple different renditions of it on YouTube. I think it's very peaceful. I'll stay here for a few more breaths. One more strong inhale and a loud exhale. And then let's go ahead and get that right foot on top of the bolster. And if it falls away from you, that's fine. Get the left foot on top. We're just really meandering our way to hugging the knees in. Now you're probably gonna have to rock the hips gently up on top of that blanket. There's a little bit of balance going on here. Ah, breathe. Don't worry. No one can see you if you tip over. And then I'm just going to roll off to my left side in the fetal position. and then slowly make your way back up. <sighs> All right, let's set those props aside. Come back to a seated pose. When you're ready, draw the shoulders up toward the ears, hold it. And you might wanna just massage out the neck with the shoulders. And when you're ready, take the shoulders back and down, drop the chin. And so as we go through some of our stretches in the sequence, you know, anytime you feel tightness, invoke patience with that part of the body. Send the breath there. And then gently bring the chin back up. Fabulous. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale the hand to the top of the head as you gently pull the head to the right shoulder. There's a Pali word. It's very close to the Sanskrit word. It's Kanti. It means patience means tolerance or sometimes forgiveness. Go ahead, bring the head back to center, release the right arm. And that kanti, that word kanti, is one of the paramitas, which are um, the 10 perfections, 10 perfections. And so patience is one of the perfections that a bodhisattva would be achieving. Go ahead and inhale that left arm up. Release the hand to the top of the head. Gently draw the head to the left shoulder. Close your eyes. Perfect. Bring the head to center. Release that left arm. Open the legs out into a view. Pavista Konasana. Wiggle your way in front of the sit bones. 
Ah, flex the feet, spread the toes wide. Just gently push the backs of the thighs down to the earth without locking the knees. And we're just gonna hold that for a second. Well, all right, maybe more than a second. Be patient, <laughs> breathe. If this is too much of a stretch, of course, you should not invoke patience and try to ride it out. If it's too much, sit up onto uh, the edge of your blanket or at a slight bend of the knees. No struggling in restorative yoga. Sit up nice and tall. Ah, perfect. So let's make this option A to hang out right here. Option B is going to be to gently walk your way forward into whatever fold is waiting for you. If you feel like moving around a little bit to loosen up, you should totally do that. You might choose to grab a prop for your head, depending on how far away the floor is. If the floor is not cooperating with you this evening, well, let's not get impatient about it. It just is what it is, right? All right, find your fold, close your eyes. And then we're gonna start to relax here. So what I mean by that is each exhale, can you let go of the legs? I don't even care if you let go of them being flexed, right? Just soften. Now, normally in class, I would joke, don't worry, there's a friend there to pull you out of this pose if you get stuck. I'm afraid since you're at home, <laughs> you might be there on your own, but we won't leave you behind. We will all end up in Shavasana together somehow. Yeah, but soften the muscles, release a little deeper with each breath. Feel the hips letting go. Soften the knees, soften the space behind the knees. Soften the jaw, make sure you're not clenching because you don't like this pose. We're invoking Conti, patience. The paramita of, of perfection. These forward folds are a great place to practice patience. Because I do think at some point the mind starts going seriously, like how much longer are we holding this? We're gonna be okay, breathe. Did you notice I didn't answer that? We won't be here too much longer, but enough for you to take another deep inhale and a long exhale. And then make sure you smile on your way all the way back out. Uh, if you did put a prop out in front of you, go ahead, set it off to the side, slide a hand under each knee. We're gonna help the legs out, bring them in. Oh, hug them in tight. And since we're already right here, we'll set up for a twist. So I'm just gonna turn to the side. Keep that left arm hugging the knees. Take the right hand behind you. Find your length and then just a fabulously gentle twist to the right. You don't wanna let the legs go with you on the twist. So if you wanna turn back and look at them, just make sure the knees haven't tipped to the right as well.
Stay in your twist. Let the head turn to look over that left shoulder. And then go ahead and unravel that twist. The right arm is going to hug the knees. Left hand behind you. Find your length in the spine, always twisting on an exhale. So to the left. If you need to look back at the knees again to make sure they're aiming straight up the ceiling, go ahead and check. And then staying in the twist, go ahead and turn the head to look over the right shoulder. and then everything back to center. Perfect. So while you're here, if you have a block, just have it within reach. I'm just gonna bring it right next to me. You might not need it, and you know, if you don't have one, don't worry about it. Um, but we're trying to make all these poses pretty supported. So hands behind you. I'm going to push my way up onto my feet, wiggle the legs wide. Well, I'm turning to the side, but you guys keep facing forward. Coming into Malasana, and so, the feet are at least hip distance apart. Um, the block is if you want to sit down. That's totally fair, right? If you don't want to, you don't need the block. The elbows are going to the inside of the knees. Palms push against each other to find the heart. And then there's a lengthening from the root chakra, which is at the base of the spine, all the way to the crown of the head. So of course, we need an accommodation for this pose because a lot of heels are not going to touch the ground. So if you still have that blanket rolled up, slide the blanket right underneath the heels so you are not working. You could still add the block and have both props, right? All right, make sure you're in a happy place. <sighs> Close your eyes, find your patience. Each inhale, crown of the head reaching for the ceiling. Each exhale, we're not losing our length, but we feel the root chakra reaching for the earth. Perfect, we're gonna release the hands down to the ground in front of us, and as I straighten my legs to come into kind of a wide-footed forward fold, I want to take the feet parallel so they're no longer pigeon-toed. And then just kind of rock it out while you're here. Find monkey pose, hands either on the floor or on your shins. And then release. Bend into that right knee a little bit. You'll feel the, the hips move over to the right. And then straighten that right leg, bend into the left leg. And then straighten. We're gonna wiggle the feet in towards each other. So the big toes are right next to each other. It's a little space between the heels. Stay in your fold, see if you can feel that the hips are over the ankles. Inhale, monkey, hold it right here. Monkey's a straight spine. The gaze is down at the earth so that the neck also stays neutral. Good job, one more breath. And then slowly come back down. Now, depending on where you are on your mat, I'm in the middle. I wanna get to downward facing dog, so my hands are gonna go forward a little bit, and my legs are gonna go backward the rest. So if you ended up at the front of your mat, obviously you want your feet to walk all the way back or vice versa. Once you get to dog, walk it out. <sighs> Strong breath in, super loud exhale. And come on down to find Balasana, child's pose. If you want to grab a prop along the way, totally fine. Good 
So I do have a story for you. I think I might break it up, um, you know, throughout a few poses. So I might leave you hanging a little bit, but as the story goes, Buddha and his disciples decided to take this long journey. And as they were out walking way off in the distance, they could see a lake. And so they decided to head in that direction because they were thirsty. And so when they got to the lake, Buddha chose his youngest and his most impatient disciple to go fetch him some water. And so the young man went down towards the lake, but at the time that he got there, a cart driven by oxen was making its way through the water. And as you can visualize in your mind's eye right now, all the mud started to circulate, right? It got mixed up with the water and the water became very murky. And the disciple thought, there is no way I can bring muddy water to Buddha. So he went back and he told Buddha that the water was not uh, drink worthy and they would have to either wait or go somewhere else. I'm gonna leave you there for a second. Take another deep breath in child's pose. And then let's pull ourselves all the way up into table. It seemed like a long way to go. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Two more. Coming back to a neutral spine, I'm going to send the left hand all the way up towards the ceiling. The palm is facing to my left. So if that arm rotates on you, turn the palm back in the direction you are gazing, which should be to your left at the moment. Big inhale. Exhale, we're threading that arm underneath the right arm. So if the floor is too far away for the shoulder and the head, grab a prop as you make your way down so that you're comfortable here. Once you get down here, excuse me, and to thread the needle, close your eyes and make certain that this is not a strain on your bottom shoulder. We're going to add on a couple variations here. Let's make this option A. Option B, reach that right arm overhead. The hand is on the floor. I walked my arm behind my right ear. That might not happen for you. That's totally okay. We don't want to push it. So now we're making sure both shoulders are happy with where they're at, right? <sighs> Deep in the breath. And you really should pay attention in this particular sequence. If there's a pose that comes up that you don't like, I want you to tap into the feeling of impatience of being there. Does it expend more energy to sit in a pose impatiently, having that argument in your head, or would it expend more energy to positively sit in that pose and talk yourself through it? Okay, this was option B. Option C is going to be to shift my weight into the left knee, and then get my right leg all the way out to the side in front of me. I have my foot flat on the ground. The toes are facing in the direction, well, kind of on my right hand, the way it's reaching. Breathe. Once you get that leg out to the side, you might be able to open up that top arm just a little bit more. You might be able to rotate the heart just a tad up towards the ceiling. You might not, so don't go there if that's not right for you. If you chose to extend the leg out to your side, what about lifting that heel? So you'll feel your weight tip back more into that left knee, right? We're not going any farther than this, so you can play here if you want to. You can just kind of rock back and forth, lifting the right heel and setting it down. We're being patient with the body and where it wants to go.
Good job. All right. If you have the heel lifted, set it down. Slide that right hand back in if you sent it overhead. That'll be a good support for us to pull the right knee back in if we chose to extend it. Gently push your way back up. Woo! And wiggle that out a little bit. Oh, you might go to cat cow. You might go side to side. Whatever feels right. And then you stay there. I'm going to need to turn around. Inhale, cow, and you're ready. Take it to cat. Two more. Come back to that neutral spine, send the right arm up to the ceiling. Remember the right palm is facing the same way you're looking. Strong inhale. Exhale, gently sweep that right arm down, let it thread underneath the left. You're grabbing a prop if you need one. And then again, this is option A, right where you landed. Option B, left arm. Oops, I have a bolster in my way. Left arm reaching overhead and then letting the fingers walk their way behind the ear, if that's okay. I'll just hang out here for a second before we even think about option C. Make sure both shoulders are happy. Stay here if you want to or shift the weight into the right knee so you can extend that left leg out in front of you. We're trying to get the foot flat on the floor. And then remember, if you do get here, you might have some space to open up the heart, take your gaze up to the ceiling perhaps. These are all just options. You need to play around with the pose for yourself. Maybe that top arm can walk further behind you. And then from here, if you did extend the leg, you can lift that left heel off the ground and play around with setting it down, just rocking back and forth. And then slowly bring the left heel down. Remember, we slid in that left arm first because it gave us more support. Then we can pull that left knee back in and gently return to table. Decide what the body wants you to do here. You know, move in the direction that stretches out whatever you had going on and thread the needle. And then let's take this to downward facing dog. I just want to stretch this out a little bit more. Remember, make what allowances you need to in dog. The knees do not have to be straight. The heels might never, never touch the ground in this pose. That's totally okay. We just really want to work on getting the hips back and up. We don't want the shoulders coming forward over the wrists. Deep inhale. Big exhale as you bring your knees back down to the earth for one of my favorite restorative poses. So grab your bolster. If you don't have a bolster, a pillow or blanket will do. That bolster is coming in the middle of your mat horizontally across it. And then we're going to bring the hips down on top. Oh and just melt right here. Oh, I'd probably stay right here with you if I hadn't left you mid-story. However, we left the story with the disciple coming back and telling Buddha that he couldn't drink the water, it was too muddy. So after about half an hour, Buddha asked the same disciple to go back to the lake and fetch him water because he was thirsty. 
when the young man got back to the lake, he realized it was still all murky. The, you know, the, the water wasn't clear and definitely wasn't drinkable, and he certainly was not going to offer that to Buddha. And so he went back and he said, we can't drink that water. We're going to have to go find a town so we can get something to drink. So Buddha didn't answer him. He actually didn't even make a movement. He just sat there. He stayed there. And then after a while, he asked the same disciple to go back to the lake to get him some water. The disciple didn't want to argue with Buddha, but he was a little um, angry that he was being dispatched to the lake for the third time when the water was completely undrinkable. But to his surprise, when he got there, the water was crystal clear. And so he brought the water back and gave it to Buddha. Buddha looked at that crystal clear water and he said to the disciple, what have you done to clear the water? The young man was confused. He didn't understand the question because of course, he hadn't done anything to the water. So Buddha looked at him and explained, you waited and you let it be. And as you waited and let it be, you allowed the mud to settle. You gave it time. You were not impatient. And our mind is a lot like that murky water. It gets riled up very easily. We can't see things clearly. We get impatient. But when we sit back and we wait, and remember, waiting is not without action or energy, then everything comes to balance on its own. So if you have felt impatient in the recent days, or it strikes you in the next few, do you suppose that you could try this idea of waiting? Just waiting. When impatience arises, we still have to exercise compassion towards ourselves. But can we find a way to just sit back and let things be, to perhaps find out if they will come into balance on their own in our world as well. Gosh, I hate to move you. Isn't this the best pose? Oh. Again, if you were right in front of me, I would allow you to bribe me to stay right here. But since that is not the case, take a deep breath. Loud sigh. And then let's go ahead and get our hands underneath the shoulders. We can find a supported cobra right here. This should feel pretty darn good. Don't come up this high if your back is telling you not to, right? Breathe, soft shoulders. Maybe remember in cobra, you know, they, the snake, right, stretches upwards and we're trying to lengthen our neck in this pose. So if you think about that lengthening, maybe it might remind you not to lose your neck, right? Deep inhale. Ah, perfect, okay. Let's push the ground away with the hands, lift the hips up behind us. I'm just gonna take this into child's pose for a brief moment, allowing my elbows and my forehead to rest on whatever prop is right before me.
And then slowly coming back up into table. Don't worry about the bolster underneath you. It's not gonna get in our way. Go ahead and stretch the left leg out behind you, parallel to the ground, draw the abdomen in, keep the hips level, and stretch that right arm forward if you can, cat balance. So if you're feeling wobbly, or you're feeling maybe a little weak, invoke patience. It's okay if we have to come back down. Good job. Set the right hand down. Open up that left hip. And then bring the inner edge of that foot down to the floor. Mm -hmm. Option A, stay right here, or at least come up onto the fingertips of the left hand. Option B, left arm reaches for the sky. And then maybe we can take that arm and reach it overhead. Let the palm turn towards the ground. Good job. Slowly close that left hip. Bring the hand down first, then plant the knee. Fabulous. Round it in the cat for a moment. Come back to a neutral spine, send that right leg straight out behind you, set your alignment, and then left arm forward. We're going to bring the left hand down, open up the right hip, come on to the fingertips of the right hand. And then maybe take the right arm straight up. Go ahead and set the inner edge of that back foot down. Sorry, I think I made that harder than it needed to be, didn't I? And then reach that top arm overhead. Meander back to table and round it into cat. Perfect. Go ahead and sit back onto the heels for a moment. Let's clear our space. If you have a strap, go ahead and grab it. Okay, I'm gonna keep that left leg tucked in. Just gonna straighten out the right leg in front of me and lasso that foot. Go ahead and grab the straps in the right hand, just the right hand. Sit up nice and tall. Now, I want you to be aware, maybe consciously aware or intuitively aware, if the right hip and the left hip are not in line. Yeah, so I can feel when I sat down, my right hip went forward. I didn't remind you guys to pull it back. I can feel it's different. Pull that hip back. Now sit up tall. Take the left hand off behind you. We're going to take a twist to the left. It's an open twist. It should feel good. On an exhale, Bring the heart back through the center. Switch hands that are hanging onto the strap. Bring the right hand behind you. Push the ground away to find your length. Exhale to the right. Wait for your exhale to come back to center. I'm gonna drop the strap, but I wanna leave it here. So just set it down, it's fine. Lift and turn the heart back towards that left knee, and then walk your way into a fold. You will feel the right hip leave the ground. That's totally fine. And then push your way back up. We need to grab that strap again in both hands. 
So I'm gonna let that right knee bend so I can get some leverage. I've got the heel on the ground. I'm gonna shift my left leg over a little bit. It's sliding underneath my right leg so I feel more supported. Keeping the back straight, go ahead and tip back into the sit bones and then send that right leg up wherever it wants to go. Deepen the breath. You might be invoking patience with the hamstring. You might be invoking patience with me. I promise we'll get to Shavasana soon. And then I'm slowly letting that strap just thread through the fingers so the leg can come all the way back down. And it's okay if it lands on top of the other foot. We're switching sides anyway. So go ahead and send that left foot out. Tuck that right foot in. Lasso the ball of the left foot. Sit up nice and tall. Pull that left hip back. I'm hanging onto the straps with my left hand. Right hand's reaching behind me for the open twist. Inhale, sit up. Exhale to the right. On your next exhale, come back to center. The hands are switching places, left hand behind you. Pause here to inhale, exhale to the left. On your exhale, Release the twist, just set the strap down, lift the heart, turn it towards that right knee, come on down and do a fold. It's okay if the left hip leaves the ground, it's going to. And just pause there for a moment. And then slowly make your way back up. We're gonna grab the strap with both hands and then just go ahead and slide that leg in towards you so you have support to pull that right foot through a little bit more. Tip back into the sit bones, straighten the spine, and then see where this leg wants to go. Deepening the breath. And then gently let the straps thread through the fingers. Bring that leg down. Ah, set the strap aside, not too far away from you. Just set it down for a second because we need some other stuff here. Grab the bolster, a block or two. We're gonna need the blanket as well. So that blanket, I just, I, I opened it up a little bit. I want it to be more of a roll, like a long, noodle so it's really in the same shape as when we started it's just a little rounder give you a second to get that okay and then go ahead and stretch both legs out in front of you i want that blanket right in my hip crease i'm gonna sit up tall i'm tucking it in because when i come forward into a fold i want my ribs to be able to kind of just pour over that support. Now, the bolster's next. It's going on the shins. Of course, everything I'm telling you can be moved and changed uh, according to your needs, right? I'm gonna take the strap. I'm gonna catch both feet. I'm just gonna hang on to that strap with one hand, and I'm pretty darn certain I'm gonna want a block up on top of this bolster. And I'm even thinking it looks like it's really far away. I'm not sure I'm getting there today. So we'll see what happens. So sit up nice and tall. Remember that block can be higher and we can make any changes we need. Let's just see where we end up. Come forward into a fold. 
and choking up on that strap a little bit. So if your forehead makes it to the block, let's just stay right there. If you are dying to drop that block lower, that's fine. If you need it higher, also fine. If there is no way that your forehead is going to touch that block, you could slide the bolster in more, but I don't really want its weight on your knees per se, so get it up on the thighs a little bit. So then that block is right here, and we can still hang onto the strap. Yeah, so you gotta set that up for you. Each one of us are gonna be different in this pose. I do promise you, if this is already creating frustration in your head, that Shavasana is next, so hang in there with me and breathe. With each inhale, can you feel the abdomen move against the blanket? Kind of like a gentle reminder that it's there supporting you. Stay with the breath. Ah, invoking patience. You know, it is not a coincidence that I wear my Ellen DeGeneres Be Kind tank top because I was thinking that, again, when you do feel like you're stressed out and you don't have a grip on patience, we have to be kind to ourselves. We have to exercise some semblance of compassion, right? Until we can get to that positive energy. So being kind to yourself in the most precious way, change this pose if you aren't happy. We're just staying here one more minute. Take a deep inhale. Exhale and gently make your way back up. Yeah. I know it's not fair that I didn't stay in the pose with you. Go ahead, set your props aside so they're not on top of you, and then look at your fabulous space and decide how it should best be set up for Shavasana. Whatever you want to do with your props is completely up to you. Create what you need. I kind of liked having my bolster propped up on the block with my knees over it, so I think that's where I'm gonna head. Ah, remember, when you settle into Shavasana, will you please double check and make sure every part of the body is extremely happy. If, there, you know, if something isn't, do some adjusting, some wiggling. Ah, every part of the body should be completely supported. Nothing left hanging in midair. The eyes should softly close. As you feel the breath slow down and deepen, also allow the mind to slow down as you allow the body to deepen into a relaxed place. If Shavasana is a challenge for your mind, this would be a great time to work on patience, right? But yet kindness and compassion towards yourself, this really is not your favorite place to be. If you have no trouble with Shavasana, 
I set you free on your own. I will come back and get you. You'll hear me speaking to you too deep in your breath.
start to bring your focus to your breath. Joyce Meyer wrote that patience is not the ability to wait. It's the ability to maintain a good attitude while you're waiting. As you continue to deepen the breath, bring some movement into the hands and the feet, unless of course you want to stay where you are and take a longer nap after we're done. Let's go ahead and stretch the arms overhead. And then bring them back down alongside you. Just feel their gentle weight. Empty out the lungs, slow, deep inhale through the nose. Slow exhale through the mouth. And then laying your hands across your heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.